I would honestly think about resting him for game three, give him another day, but without an injection, without any serious indications of problem, I can see why you get him back in. Hey, we're excited to have Will Carroll at Injury Expert on Twitter joining us right now to talk injuries. What's up, Will? Great to have you on. Appreciate the time, man. Uh, great to be on, though it's you know always bad news when I come on. <laughs> I know, but you're used to that. You know, you get the <laughs> yeah. phone call, and we hope that at least you, you can bring us some positivity to the news. So we'll jump right to it. I mean, you see what happened to Shohei Otani. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? I mean... They're saying, like, he should be okay and, and he should play. Even if that's the case, what does that look like? He should be able to play. All indications are that he didn't have any range of motion issues, that he didn't have any strength issues. What he had was an anterior subluxation. Basically, with his left shoulder when he landed on it, it forced the, the head of the humerus to come out forward. Uh, so he didn't come all the way out. Any time with a dislocation or a subluxation, which is just kind of a mini dislocation, uh, what you're worried about is not whether you can get it back in. That almost is always the case. What you're worried about is what got damaged inside. What got stretched? Is it a ligament? Is it a tendon? Is it the shoulder capsule? Worse, when it slams back in, is it the labrum? So it looks like he escaped all of that, that it's just painful, that it's a little bit swollen. They were able to control that with modalities. Uh, my sources told me no injections at all. So uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem. It's also his back shoulder for swinging. So it's a little less affected, um, but uh, we'll see how it is. I would honestly think about resting him for game three, give him another day, but without an injection, without any serious indications of problem, I can see why you get him back in because he is Shohei Otani. Well, first of all, he's playing. Okay, I mean, it's World yeah. Series. It's game three. <laughs> if this was June, you'd be like, okay, Shohei, yeah. we're going to give you a couple of days. It's game three of the World Series in New York. They got a chance to go for the jugular here. He's playing. Now, now my question is, is, it didn't look like much. Like, he had his left arm. I can't really do it because the screen's so yeah. small. But, like, he had his left arm kind of dragging behind him. Now, Kratz, yeah. I don't know if Kratz ever had this, but as a catcher, I would catch. And every once in a while, a guy would throw a ball way up and away, like way up here. And you'd kind of yeah. it would be like, oh, Right. And then it would kind of, yeah. you know, and you move it a little bit. Is that kind of the same thing that it just kind of, a little bit. it kind of just pinches on you a little bit. And then after a day or two, it kind of goes away. Yeah. That's actually more a pectoral issue. Um, you know, where, where your pec muscle comes up and attaches, you see this a lot with NFL, like offensive linemen, they'll get pushed back. It's the same thing when it's overhead, when he landed on it, it basically just forced it forward. Uh, and instead of the whole shoulder coming, it was just the bone. So is this something that could, because you always hear about people who get like dislocated shoulders and then all of a sudden, you know, they're walking around and they jump and land and they're, Poop! oh no, my yeah. shoulder. Is this something be that could linger in the sense of like a year from now, he's, you know, he's dislocating. John Smoltz even said, oh, I did it 13 times in one season on my non-throwing <laughs> shoulder. I'm like, seems kind of terrible, but is this something that can linger or is it a different type of dislocation? We hope not. You know, what you don't want to have happen is that the shoulder capsule and those muscles that hold everything in, you don't want those to become lax. They'll get like old socks and just slide down. And we've seen issues like that. Fernando Tatis Jr. had that issue. And, you know, then when he was on suspension, he went back in to basically just tighten things back up. And he's been fine. Uh, another one, and this is kind of uh, the best example, is Clay Bell or Cody Bell. Why do I always call him his dad? Cody Bellinger a couple of years ago. <laughs> Uh, when he had that, you know, sort of high fives uh, and popped his shoulder out, he had to have it tightened back up and he's had really no problem since. So hopefully it's not uh, an issue where he has to have that, but it is kind of stretching things out. And that's really the concern you have. But isn't that, that was a bigger deal though, because it was his front shoulder, right? It was his right arm that he yep. did the whole yep. thing. And he was like, oh, and where Shohei, it's his back shoulder and it's not pitching shoulder for Anybody out there worried, like, this is going to yeah. affect his pitching again next year? It's his back shoulder. Now, as, as a former left-handed hitter, I would play golf, and I, my left shoulder sometimes from getting mm -hmm. through it would get sore. And, yep. and So then, like, if I would hit a lot, my shoulder would get sore. So it didn't really affect me. It was more of just, uh, man, that's kind of a pain in the butt. It never affected yeah. me when I was hitting. I was like, oh, I can't swing because my left shoulder's sore. It was more of just, man, it's like a, it's like an aggravation. You're like, this is just annoying. Yeah. It, it, that's exactly it. It doesn't feel right because there's a little more movement in there. Uh, Bellinger's was also a posterior 
uh, dislocation and his was actually out. So it was a bigger stretch than what Otani likely had. So the direction, what it stretches, what it moves, um, you know, there's a lot of things that affect things and a lot of things that don't. I mean, like Jazz Chisholm is playing with a, a torn UCL. That doesn't affect your swing at all. And since it's his non-throwing hand, uh, he's able to do things. You know, if normal people tear their UCL, they don't need Tommy John surgery. It's just if you're trying to throw 90 miles an hour over and over. All right, so let's bring everyone on here for a sec because I want Kratz to be visible when I ask this. But when we did our post-game show <laughs> the other day, well, Kratz was like, Freddie's ankle's fine. I mean, obviously, he's bashing a homer of his life. You know, the first Grand Slam walk-up we've seen in World Series history, the whole deal and all that. He had the triple earlier. And he game. didn't even have a bloody sock. No bloody sock, right? And <laughs> oh, some people, poor Kurt. Well, <laughs> some people were offended though, and Kratz likes to, you know, use a little sarcasm in how he operates and how he delivers. But well, what are you seeing from Freddie? And how do you explain what he's going through ankle wise right now? Because some people were like, "No, he's really hurt," and you know, give him more credit. We are giving him credit. So what is he going yeah. through? And is it four to five hours of treatment? How does this all go down? Uh, so he has a high ankle sprain, and we've seen these over and over. We don't often see them uh, in baseball just because there's not the mechanism like you would in soccer or, or American football. So it's a situation where this high ankle sprain, it is not healed. It's just simply not. And what the high ankle is, it's actually the syndesmosis joint, which is in between the two bones of the lower leg. And when that moves, uh, you don't want it to. So uh, it gets stretched a little bit. It's painful. It lingers. It takes about six weeks. It's this big, thick uh, ligament in there. So uh, he's dealing with it. But there's two things that happen. First, he got the extra rest. Those three or four days off where he wasn't re-injuring it, essentially, every single day, that really helped. He's also got to be comfortable with it. You know, sometimes you just have to own the pain and be able to deal with it. And it's lessened, probably. Um, he's gotten used to the small brace that he's wearing. He's gotten used to what he can and can't do. So I think this is the situation where he's just more comfortable with the pain. Uh, I'm sure the treatment helps. That, that's a great medical staff there. Uh, so I think they've been able to, to first manage it, and he's been able to control it. We talk about it all the time. AJ even alluded to it. Shohei's playing. You're going to play yeah. in the World Series. How long – is too long for a guy like Freddie Freeman, who's not tiny, he's probably 230 pounds, to be running on right. a injured ankle, to not hurt his ankle more, because assuming it's probably, unless he rolls it, it's not getting worse, to hurt other things, hips, knees, back. How much is how much is that a fear at what time span? Like if, if the playoffs were two months, right. he would have – could he have could he have more significant issues with other parts of his body yeah that's it's a great idea uh eric it's one of those things where i don't think with, with any sort of ankle sprain the body it essentially protects itself in these situations it's not going to allow you to do the things if that was a serious severe high ankle sprain one that might require surgery and we've seen this uh to a tongue of aloha the uh quarterback for the dolphins has tightrope in both his ankles, which is kind of a Kevlar fiber holding things together, rather than having those ligaments for the, the high ankle. I don't think with, with Freddie, it was that serious. It was probably a grade one, grade two, painful, lingering, problematic, but I don't think it's gonna make any sort of uh, you know issue for his hips, for his back. You do always worry about that, especially with older players, especially with uh, you know high spin guys who are, are having to put so much torque on their back and their hips. Hey, well, I want to ask you about the Dodgers pitching. So I got two here, but I'll, I'll start with Walker Bueller. He's coming off a second Tommy John surgery. It's definitely taken most of the season for him to get to a good point, but he was in a good point last time around. So what have yeah. you seen from pitchers that come back from their second Tommy John surgery? I mean, I know I've been following you in this industry long enough for you to probably cover how not many guys would make it back to even you know, a shell of their of themselves but we're seeing the second TJ happen more frequently now. Yeah, and, and there's a couple things to note here. First, I don't think it's that big a factor. Walker Bueller was back at the end of last season, and they elected not to bring him uh, back in. They said, you know, just go have a normal offseason. Whether he did or not, he didn't come back well. 
I don't know that this has much to do with that Tommy John revision, that second one. It was a different kind of operation. Um, we have seen guys come back from this over and over, and it's not a problem. You know, we're going to see Shohei Otani next year likely pitching. I don't see any reason why they would stop that despite the great season he had so far. Um, I just don't see it as a problem. Now, what was the problem for Pula? He just lost his mechanics. I don't know that that had anything to do with Tommy John. And then he just suddenly gets them back in the playoffs. Did he need some sort of trigger? Did Mark Pryor find some magic thing? I can't imagine they didn't try every possible thing. The guy went all the way back to the minor leagues to try to put things together. I feel great for the Dodgers and for Mark and for Walker that they did all that and that he got a great uh, start exactly when the Dodgers needed it. But I just have no idea what it was that suddenly clicked because uh, you guys know they were fighting us all year long. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that's why Bueller was a question mark when we came into the, the playoffs. Will he get starts? What, will he, what's his role going to be? And here he is. He's pitched pretty well for him uh, down the stretch here. So let me ask you, Will, have have you seen Tony Clark's comments about pitchers' injuries and, and what yeah. he said about what, – what do you think about that? Because I, one thing I hate more than anything I've said a million times is we can't just keep changing rules. We can't – got to yeah. figure out a better way to treat people like human beings and not robots. This isn't fantasy baseball where every pitcher can throw seven games in a seven-game series. So, so what's the solution to this whole thing? What, what, I, I know, I know, it's like, yeah, wow, right? But, but there's <laughs> got to be a solution. To fix this whole thing. Yeah, but yeah. Tony Clark you know, just had some interesting stuff. I, I think what we have to do is get serious about this. We have to stop saying, you know, we're just going to let these guys go. I mean, I, it's not showing over my shoulder. But back in 2004, I wrote a book called Saving the Pitcher. This is not new. You know, we've gone from the extremes where at Baseball Prospectus, we had to invent a set called pitcher abuse points because guys are going 150, 160 uh, pitches. Now, nobody goes 100. Uh, you were talking about Garrett Cole being pulled at, what, 88 the other day. It, it's gone to the extremes. The game has really changed. Uh, everybody's running, uh, sprinting rather than running a marathon. And it's not like you can suddenly say, you know what, why don't you just throw 90? Judge won't hit it. It'll be fine because he will. We don't have, you know, little light hitting shortstops anymore. I can remember growing up watching Ozzy Smith. Uh, the go crazy folks home run was crazy because that was his only home run that year. He was not likely to take you out. We had guys like Mark Belanger and Dave Concepcion. And now every shortstop in the game will take you long on any given pitch. So there's a reason why guys are throwing 98, 99. 105. You know, every pitcher now is Nolan Ryan. They, they've got crazy fastballs. They got wipeout sliders. They've got this stuff that they've built with TrackMan. So what we have to do now is figure out if no one not named or old as Chapman can survive 100 miles per hour, uh, you know, what can we do? How can we get serious about this? What baseball needs to do is what the NFL did for concussions. They need to get serious about it. They need to put a lot of money towards research. They've put almost none towards this. Yeah, things have helped, uh, things like internal brace for, for elbow surgery. Uh, we need to get very, very serious about this all the way down to the youth level. I love the fact that you said Araldus Chapman is really the only one that's able to he's do this. He's the because, only one. Because he's a freak. He's a freak, and he yeah. has stayed free of those injuries, and he just keeps throwing a billion. All right, I'm going to go back to the other superstar that had Tommy John surgery. Do you believe, in your medical opinion, from what you've seen, because you're not in there every day, Shohei would have been at risk of injury had he pitched in two different games for an inning this series? I know Doc, Dave Roberts already said he will not pitch. Yeah. Do you feel like he is still in a injury window where it could set his Tommy John surgery back completely? No. Uh, first, remember, he didn't have normal Tommy John surgery. And actually, Dr. Neil Elitrosh has been very, very dodgy about what he actually did. We know there was some sort of repair or replacement of the ligament. We know there was some sort of internal brace uh, or something similar put in there. But we don't know the exact. You know, there, there are a number of things where we're using Kevlar-like substances to augment the, the ligament itself, whether we're transplanting in uh, the hamstring or, or the wrist 
attendant as Dr. Job first did back in 1974. We're also seeing things, the Yankees team doctor, Chris Ahmad, is doing one he calls TJ3, which is three different types of procedures. It's repairing the ligament, it's replacing the ligament, and then he puts the the piece of the internal brace over it. So, you know, it's belt and suspenders and then another belt. Um, is that going to hold these guys together at 105 miles an hour? I don't know. We need to figure it out. We need to do a lot more biomechanical research. We need to get a lot more studies done at the major league level. We need to make sure that, uh, you know, Dr. Andrews' uh, waiting room isn't filled with 12 and 13-year-olds like it is now. Well, well, I have a buddy. One day we'll get him on here. Talks about it's the hip that really leads to the to the elbow problems. That's a whole different story that we can that we can dig into later. But, uh, you know, my, my whole thing for not getting hurt was – I would show up at your house. You'd feed me a shot from all the alcohol that you have behind you, and then nothing hurt. Yeah, so I don't know where you're located, but anytime you want to invite me over, I won't feel any pain. I'm in Indianapolis, and, and come by. Okay. Oh, right. next yeah. Time, next time I'm in Indi- uh, man, I was in Indianapolis all the time with my daughter, but she's not there anymore, so no. dang it. You got top shelf there, too. I know. Look at yeah. all that stuff. Are you a bartender in your, off- in your downtime that's, or what? That's the man cave. No, I deal with injuries, so there's a lot of sadness. So <laughs> <laughs> that's good. All right, what's your favorite thing? Before I know we got to go, but what's yeah. your favorite thing back there? Uh, back there, well, I've got some great limited edition oak and barrel apple buzz beer, which is great. But back here, Fry Ranch whiskey, amazing, just absolutely amazing, out of Nevada. There you go. Okay. All right, you gonna get a bottle? I mean, as soon as he sends me one, I'll drink it. Look it up. All right. Uh, well, on our way out here, and appreciate the time. You want to let everyone know for our audience where they can get more of your content, aside from Twitter, of course, which I threw aside out from, there. Aside from the bar, don't forget. Aside from the bar, right. St. <laughs> yeah, Elmo's. Will's buying at St. Elmo's Friday yeah. night. <laughs> yeah, so you can, you can find my content at uh, underthenife.substack.com, and you can also find more of my work on Intangible, where we're figuring out what players are clutch and what players are going to choke uh, at intangible.co. I love that. I love that. I'm a big, I'm a big believer. We all are big believer in that. And we're seeing that go down right now in the postseason. Will, thanks again for joining us. This was super informative as always. And yeah, I think there was some positive news in that, especially for the Otani fans. So appreciate the time. Hey everybody, be sure to like, and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday all year long. So do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball, the way it should be covered. 